there just aren't many industrial facilities that don't employ some form of electric process heaters. They can be used to heat lube oils, they can he be used to heat gas streams, they can be used to keep tanks warm. There's just dozens of applications. A circulation heater, for example, can be used to heat a fuel gas stream going to a turbine. One of the most important things in a turbine is not have any water in the stream. When that gas travels through our circulation heater and goes to a fuel gas heater, it can knock out all of the water. They're actually called dew point heaters. Immersion heaters can be put into vessels that heat anhydrous or aqueous ammonia for NOx control systems. So the pollution control systems in any plant that emits nitrous oxide is actually being controlled by an electric heater that vaporizes ammonia in process. Immersion heaters are at the core of the offering of the typical electric process heater. Power Blanket's an expert in immersion heaters and they really come in three main types. The first type is an over the side heater. The second type is a flanged immersion heater and the third type is a screw plug heater. Over the side heaters hang, literally hang over the side and can be immersed in a liquid like waters or, or plating materials and they can keep that whole tank well warm. It's a very easy application to do and they're very easy to install. They typically can be very tall and very long because the depth of the tank can be longer, but the heat never starts to the very end of the heater. The most common configuration is actually an L-shaped. So the long side of the L typically isn't heated, but the L side is. And so really it just matters how you get down to the bottom of that tank. They sit on the bottom of the tank, they deliver heat into the process, and they are very, very reliable. Flanged immersion heaters are at the core of the offering of immersion heaters. They always use an ANSI flange, a flange that's sized by pressure and diameter. So common flanges can come in something about three inch in diameter to units I've seen way over 30 inches in diameter. They have bolts that connect them to a mating flange in some sort of a process. They could be in a vessel for a, a process heating application with a circulation heater. They could be bolted into a tank. They could be bolted into many applications where heat transfer has to occur in that process. Flanged immersion heaters are able to be class one div one and class one div two certified. They can also be rated for ASME design and pressure ratings. So they're an ASME rated product. So they can be installed into an ASME vessel. These heaters often deliver a great deal of heat in a short period of time. So one of the things that's most important on these heaters is the protection of the heater from runaway or over temp protection. And they'll almost always build an over temp thermocouple on the surface of the heater so that the end user knows that the heater itself doesn't overheat and run away. Pipe insert immersion heaters are another type of flanged immersion heater that have gained a great deal of popularity in about the last 10 years. It's really common for people to kill their steam coils and put a pipe insert immersion heater right over the top of their steam coils. Pipe insert immersion heaters work really well because they actually have a heated well in them. They take a flange and where normal flanged immersion heaters have heating elements that are installed into the tank, when that normal flanged immersion heater is installed into a tank, you have to drain the entire tank to replace the heater. With a pipe insert immersion heater, they've actually welded a Schedule 40 pipe or multiple Schedule 40 pipes onto the face of an ANSI flange. Then that whole assembly gets installed inside the tank. What you have are heated wells with heaters on the inside of them so that when maintenance needs to be done on the heater, you don't have to drain the tank and your process can keep running. You open up the terminal box and you pull the heaters out of the wells and then you place them with a brand new one. Pipe insert immersion heaters can really add a lot of efficiency to your process. Electric heat is 100% efficient in delivering wattage into your process and it works a lot better than steam coils. And actually for a lot of tank heating applications, it works a lot better than a screw plug or a flanged immersion heater will. Screw plug heaters are kind of like the duct tape of the immersion heater application industry. They're used for a lot of different things. They can be screwed in by a connection that's called an NPT connection national pipe thread. And so just like on piping that has threads, it is designed to thread only to a certain point, then you can no longer tighten it anymore. So it's got a nice seal to it, multiple threads. They can bear a lot of pressure. And the wattages you can get out of screw plug heaters is pretty impressive. So you can get from anywhere from a little bitty 500 watt unit, like the ones in your water heater at home, all the way to one that's probably 40 feet long. The connection never gets bigger than two and a half inch NPT and that's what makes them so universal. 
a lot of tanks that are in operation that need a lot of extra heat, like in the oil field, for example, for day tanks, they have a lot of extra two inch and two and a half inch connections at the bottom of the tank. So it's really easy to drain the tank and stick the heater in the application and twist them in. Screw plug heaters are very reliable, very rugged. They can be controlled with a local thermostat and they perform very well in a lot of rugged applications. Immersion heaters are a very specific type of electric process heater. Most of the time, immersion heaters are put into a tank to keep a level of liquid at a certain temperature, whether it's a flanged immersion heater, a pipe insert immersion heater, an over the side heater, or a screw plug heater, your tank heaters need to be keeping that tank at a certain temperature. The problem is sometimes the contents of that tank can't see temperatures that are of a certain rate. So you have to protect that product from the heater. In other words, if the heater runs away and gets to 800 degrees, it may catch something on fire. So what a lot of people do is take that over the side or screw plug or flanged immersion heater and they put a thermocouple or a thermostat on the sheath of the heater just for over temp protection. On the other side of things from a control standpoint, usually you've got a very large mass of product in a tank. A lot of tar or liquids of some sort, biodiesel, and when you apply heat to that process, it just doesn't heat up very fast. It's, it's dozens of hours for it to change temperature. So the type of control that's most commonly used when we talk about the thermal loop is just an on-off or a proportional controller. There's no need to be turning that heater off and on multiple times per second, keeping a very precise temperature. On-off and proportional controllers do a fantastic job of keeping the product at a stable temperature when the insulation system is working well. Another thing that's very important is where your sensor is placed. So in the thermal loop, the sensor plays a critical role in making sure that the sensor is measuring the temperature of your product where it needs to be measured. In a tank, it often occurs that a person puts a sensor way up at the top of the tank and the heater's way at the bottom of the tank. If the tank level goes down, then the sensor is actually sensing air temperature and not liquid temperature. Be sure that you put your level controller and your sensor at the level of the heater so that you're measuring the tank contents all the way down to where the heater is. Because once the tank level goes below the heater, your level control system should really shut your heater off.